contraband. That's what Diablo was for me. It was contraband. It was illegal and not allowed. In the eyes of my parents, Diablo was a very bad thing. And as South Park teaches us, there's violence and parents don't like violence. Then there's sexual content, and that always trumps violence. If you have sexual content, it doesn't matter, you know, if you're throwing swords at each other. The minute there's some, you know, too much skin in the game, well, that's, that's, just, that's, that's it. But there's one thing that trumps both of those to some people, and that was any form of occultism or devil anything didn't matter what you were doing you could be you know shooting the devil but if there was a devil there well clearly you were one step away from joining a cult so diablo 4 beta was out a couple weeks ago diablo was always kind of a mix of all those things it's very violent it's got some sexuality to it at least the first two games did uh and then there's, of course, the heavy occultism. In the third game, a lot of that stuff had been watered down. The violence was there and was ramped up, as always. But there wasn't that much sexuality. There wasn't that much feeling of, like, real darkness. And that's what you get when you include sexuality into anything kind of like this. Things get dark really fast as soon as you start doing that. And that's something that, that really pushes that sense of hell and that sense of impending doom, which Diablo, as a franchise and as a story, is really supposed to do. You're going into hell to fight the literal devil. Somebody who wants to take Sanctuary, this little place that's outside of the dimension of a constant eternal war between light and, and darkness, and it wants to destroy it all. It wants to corrupt it all. It wants to do very bad things to it, and then it wants to snuff it out. That's what Diablo was. So what is Diablo 4? Diablo 4 is basically a watered-down version of that. It's a watered-down version in that you won't find very much sexuality, despite the fact that Lilith is very heavily present throughout the story and throughout the game. But she almost immediately dresses in a very, very conservative outfit and then proceeds to, you know have her uh, her human children and followers beat a priest to death. Well, out of any of those things, I, I, I don't know what the real darkness is. I guess it's different for every person, but it's an interesting take on the game. And for the most part, I am halfway interested in it. It's basically just a return to the good mechanics of a Diablo game, but it doesn't actually follow the heart of it, which I found after I finished playing, after the beta was over, I didn't really spend a lot of time thinking about it because the mechanics of it were really simple and really straightforward. I went from struggling to figure out like how best to play the class to very quickly kind of mastering it to fighting some of the end game content in act one and literally steamrolling it with a basic build. If you don't build right, you won't have that experience. If you if you try very underpowered abilities and very underpowered spells and, and mechanics and, and strategy, you're gonna have a difficult time. You'll you'll get steamrolled by bosses. But if you build right, then you're the one steamrolling them, not the other way around. So Diablo 4 is not necessarily a bad game in the sense that it's mechanically is everything that I loved from Diablo 1 and 2. It's a very steep learning curve for some of the fights. It's gritty, it's dark, but it's still missing some of that extra flavor. Not to say that it needs sandwich making here, there, and everywhere, but it is missing the edge of darkness. And it is missing that that sense that some of the stories that you got in Diablo 1, uh, Fallen Paladin, a couple other quests, those were really deep for me, and they always kind of felt good. I don't know if maybe I'm just too old for this now or what, but the stories didn't really click with me as far as that deep, I'm going to remember this for the next 20 years. 
what it did is it reminded me of what a good game is, which is something that is made for a fan and an audience that enjoys the game. Well, obviously things have changed since, you know, 20 years ago, even 30 years ago. But Diablo, for me, it was always that pushing that boundary thing. And right now the only boundary pushing they're doing here is in builds and play styles that affect a, a generalized core concept of the game. It's not really pushing any boundaries beyond that. It's not pushing any technical boundaries. But really, at the end of the day, you don't always need every game to do that. And certainly for a struggling studio like Blizzard, maybe just sticking to something basic is good. All of that said, where does it leave the game? Is it a buy, is it a must have, or is it something that maybe you should look at getting once the merger over Microsoft is complete? I actually think this is a title that's probably best waited until Microsoft gets hands on it because it'll probably be included in some form of Game Pass. And by then, they'll probably have fixed all the wild, really broken, overpowered builds in the game and balanced everything out to create a little bit more of a fleshed out tone feel to the game. But if you want to play the game and have those overpowered builds, they were definitely present in the beta. So I would imagine they're probably going to be present in the main game as well. Although it might be actually some other abilities, not the ones in the beta that are overtuned right now. So we'll see when that happens, but I don't recommend that you buy it unless you're a huge action RPG top-down isometric player fan. If you really enjoy that, if you really like the world of Diablo, I'd say pick it up right at launch because you're probably not going to be that disappointed, at least in the first act. The second and third and beyond and what they have to uh, fill out the game between the seasons or between content I don't know if that's really replay worthy, but that's only ever really in the eye of the actual gamer. So that'll be on you to decide. Overall, I give the game a decent rating of, thank goodness Blizzard finally learned how to do something normal without screwing it up every five minutes. It's an improvement. And it's an improvement that is heading in a better direction. Did you enjoy that video? Let us know by slamming that like button and leaving a comment below. And if you found it helpful or informative, consider hitting that super thanks button or checking out the other support options in the description. Subscribe for tons more guides and other fun videos. And for insightful gaming news content, check out our sister channel, Triple S Podcast. Oh, what?